Okay, I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> funny thing here, I was just reading without uh, actually recording. And then uh, that would kind of defeat the purpose. So <laughs> I had to quickly uh, cut on my recorder. And um, because I uh, can't read without recording. That would not be right. Uh, today is day 92. Um, and we're going to be reading today. We're going to be reading um, Judges chapter 16 through 18 and um, Luke chapter 7, verse 1 through 30. Uh, oh, by the way, um, I'm working now. I do computer consulting if I haven't told you that. And um, I had a client today start at noon and it's 10 o'clock now. And uh, now waiting on someone else in California to do what they need to do, and then I have to uh, finish it. But hopefully, I won't change the code up anymore. So while I'm waiting on him, I think he stepped out because it's uh, seven fifty-two in California. It's nine fifty-two over in Alabama. So uh, I figure I better read now because you know if I had to keep working till one o'clock in the morning, like I do sometimes, and then read then, I would be pretty tired. So I said, let me read now while I'm still up. So anyway, Judges chapter sixteen through eighteen. And Luke chapter 7, verse 1 through 30, King James Version. Judges chapter 16. Oh, another thing uh, about reading. Uh, what I found is uh, now been 90 days. Uh, what I found, uh, experience so far, that I'm getting out of it. You know, maybe nobody's looking, but that's okay. I don't really care. Uh, what I'm getting out of it is, I'm just saying this for anyone else, is that. I look at uh, being a Christian as if we all have a cup. You know, the Bible says my cup run it over. I think of this. Um, I look at your spiritual life as a cup. And what you have to do is you have to keep pouring into it. And I think life, every day as you go through life, you drink out of that cup. You know, and if you don't put anything into your cup, then one day when you really need it, you go to drink and there's nothing in it. So what I found is about reading every day, even though... You know, I'm not really doing any studies or anything like that, or I'm not really discussing it in detail like I want to. I'm just reading. But I find that just by simple, simply reading, what it's done for me is that um, I feel I feel better. You know, I'm not so prone to temptations like I would normally do. You know, like last year, you know, I wasn't reading as much as I should, and I could tell my battles were, were tougher for me. Now, I'm not saying I haven't had to still don't have battles but i'm saying by reading i feel a whole lot better a whole lot stronger um you know i went uh i traveled and i didn't read for five or six days and i can tell a difference so what i'm gonna have to do is i guess the rest of my life you know is i'm gonna ha definitely have to make sure i get the word in me every day i don't know if i'm gonna read the bible through every day who knows i might i might do that um but i think maybe i'll probably do more targeted studies or at least make sure i get word in me so if anybody that's saying this is corny I don't think you should have to record it but the only reason I'm doing it because I know me if I didn't record it I probably would have quit a long time ago and uh, it's it's not easy you know I, I think about it I do a lot of things I started a lot of things beginning of the year and uh, a lot of them I had to put down to the work and stuff just coming up and battles I have to fight so I had to set some aside and decide what was important but the most important thing is, is is reading this Bible because I know that gives me strength to do everything else. So just a little bit about what I found in the, in the first 90 days. You know, I still want to say it's a habit. Maybe at the end of this year, it will become a habit and second nature and I'll do it. You know, um, you know, maybe I, at the end of this year, I'll start another study on a video and probably always do it. You know, um, so. You know, it's got a lot on my mind and I'm thinking about it and I know I'm going through I'm in the middle of a whole lot of stuff right now so um, I'm hoping and praying that uh, regardless of what happens with it that um, I know God will be with me the whole while so it really doesn't matter how it turns out you know because I know that regardless the most important thing is that he would never leave you or forsake you but at any rate today is day 92 Judges chapter 16 through 18 Luke chapter 7 Verse 1 through 30, King James Version. Chapter 16. 
then went Samson to Gaza and saw there in Holland and went in unto her. And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither, and they compass him in and lay wait for him all night in the gate of the city, and were quiet all the night, saying, In the morning, when it is day, we should kill him. And Samson lay till midnight and rose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders and carried them up to the top of an hill that is before Hebron. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him and see wherein his great strength lie, and by that and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee, every one of us, eleven hundred pieces of silver. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green whisks that were never dried, then I should be weak and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green whisks, which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait, fighting with her in the chamber. And she said unto them, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he break the whisk as a thread of tow and broke him. It's broken when it touches the fire, so his strength was not known. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast marked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If they blind, bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him, The Philistines. Philistines upon thee, Samson, and there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber, and he brake them off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Here are the two thou hast mocked me, told me lies, tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, Thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. And she fastened it with the pen, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep, and went away with the pen of the, of the beam, and with the web. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee, when thy heart is not with me? Thou hast marked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lie. And it came to pass, when she pressed him daily with her words, and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart, and said unto her, There had not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength would go from me, and I should become weak and be like another man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And, and she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And he said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I would go out as other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer great sacrifice unto Dagon, their God, and to rejoice. For they said, A God hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God hath delivered unto our hands, our enemy, and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when the hearts were married, that they called, said, Call for Samson, that he may be as sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport. And they sat, sat in between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may fill the pillars upon whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, 
and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 300 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, and on which it was borne up of the one with his right hand and the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Then his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtal in the burying place of Noah his father. And he judged Israel twenty years. Chapter 17 And there was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah. And he said unto his mother, The eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from thee, about which thou curest, and speak and spakest of also in my years, ears, behold the silver is with me, I took it. And his mother said, Behold, be thou of the Lord my son. And when he had restored the eleven hundred shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord for my hand, from my hand for my son, to make a graven image and a molten image. Now therefore I will restore it unto thee. And yet he restored the money unto his mother, and his mother took two hundred shekels of silver and gave them to the founder who made thereof a graven image and a molten image, and they were in the house of Micah. And the man Micah had an house of gods and made an ephod and teraphim and consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And there was a young man out of Bethlehem of Judah, <clears throat> of the family of Judah, who was a Levite, and he sojourned there. And the man departed out of the city from Bethlehem, Bethlehem Judah, to sojourn there he could find a place. And he came to Mount Ephraim to the house of Micah as he journeyed. And Micah said unto him, Whence comest thou? And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah, and I go to sojourn where I may find a place. And Micah said unto him, Dwell with me, and be unto me a father and a priest, and I will give thee ten shekels of silver by the year, and a suit of apparel, and my victuals. So the Levite went in, and the Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man was unto him as one of his sons. And Micah consecrated the Levite, and the young man became his priest, and was the house and was in the house of Micah. Then said Micah, Now know I know I that the Lord would do me good, seeing I have a Levite to be my priest. Chapter eighteen. In those days there was no king in Israel, and in those days the tribe of Danites sought them an inheritance to dwell in, for until that day all their inheritance had not fallen unto them among the tribes of Israel. And the children of Dan sent to their family five men from their coast, men of valor, from Zorah and from Estiel, to spy out the land and to search it. And they said unto them, Go, search the land. Who, when they came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, they lodged there. When they were by the house of Micah, they knew the voice of the young man, the Levite, and they turned in thither and said unto him, Who brought thee thither? And what makest thou in this place? And what thou, what hast thou here? And he said unto them, Thus, and said, and, and thus and thus dealt Michael with me, and hath hired me, and I am his priest. And they said unto him, Ask counsel, we pray thee of God, that we may know whether our way which we go should be prosperous. And the priest said unto them, Go in peace, before the Lord is your way wherein ye go. Then the five departed and came to Laish, and saw the people that were therein, how they dwelt careless after the manner of the Zidonians, quiet and secure, and there was no magistrate in the land that might put them to shame in anything. And they and they were far from Zidonians and had no business with any man. And they came unto the brethren of Zorah and Eshel, and their brethren said unto them, What say ye? 
And they said, Arise, that we may go up against thee, for we have seen the land, and behold, it is very good. And are ye still? Be not slothful to go, and to enter to possess the land. When ye go, ye shall come unto a people secure, and to a large land. For God hath given it into your hands, a place where there is no want of anything that is in the earth. And there went from thence of the family of the Danites, out of Zorah, out of Eshel, six hundred men appointed with weapons of war. And they went up and pitched in Kerjate Jerem in Judah, wherefore they call that place Mahana Dian unto this day. Behold, it is behind Kerjat Jerem. And they passed thence unto Mount Ephraim and came unto the house of Micah. Then answered the five men that went to spy out the country of Laish and said unto their brethren, Do ye know that there is these houses, an ephod, and teraphim, and a graven image, and a molten image? Now therefore consider what ye have to do. And they turned thitherward and came to the house of the young man, the Levite, even unto the house of Micah, and saluted him. And the six hundred men appointed with their weapons of war, which were of the children of Dan, stood by the enemy of the gate. And the five men that went to spy out the land went up, and came in thither, and took the graven image, and the ephod, and the teraphim, and the molten image. And the priest stood in the entering of the gate with the six hundred men that were appointed with weapons of war. And these went into Micah's house and fetched a carved image, the ephod and the teraphim with the molten image. Then said to the priest unto them, What do ye? And they said unto him, Hold thy peace, lay thine hand upon my mouth, thy mouth, and go with us, and be to us a father and a priest. It is better for thee to be a priest unto the house of one man, or that thou be a priest unto a tribe and a family in Israel. And the priest's heart was glad, and he took the ephod and the teraphim and the graven image, and went in the midst of the people. So they turned and departed, and put the little ones and the cattle and the carriage before them. And when they were a good way from the house of Micah, the men that were in the houses near to Micah's house were gathered together and overtook the children of Dan. And they cried unto the children of Dan, and they turned their faces and said unto Micah, What aileth thee that thou comest with such a company? And he said, Ye have taken away my gods, which I made, and the priests, and ye are gone away. And what have I more? And what is this that ye say unto me? What aileth thee? And the children of Dan said unto him, Let not thy voice be heard among us, lest angry fellows run upon thee, and thou lose thy life with the lives of thy household. And the children of Dan went their way, and when Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back into his house. And they took the things which Micah had made, and the priests which he had, and came unto Laish, unto a people that were a, a quiet and secure, and they smote them with the edge of the sword, and burnt the city with fire. And, they were, and there was no deliverer, because it was far from Zidon, and they had no business with any man. And it was in the valley that lie by Bethlehem, and they built a city and dwelt therein. And they called the name of the city Dan, after the name of Dan, their father, who was born into Israel. Howbeit the name of the city was Laish at the first. And the children of Dan set up the garden image, and Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, and he and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land. And they set them up Micah's graven image, which he had all the time that the house of God was in Shalom. Luke chapter 7, verse 1 through 30. Now, when he had ended all the sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when he, and when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation, and he had built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself. For I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. 
but say in a word and my servant should be healed for I am also a man set under authority having under me soldiers and I say unto one go and he goeth and to another come and he cometh and to my servant do this and he doeth it when Jesus heard these things he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him I say unto you I have not found so great faith no not in Israel and they that were sent returning to the house found the servant whole that had been sick and it came to pass the day after that he went into the city called Nahum and many of the disciples went with him and much people now when he came nigh to the gate of the city behold there was a dead man carried out the only son of his mother and she was a widow and much people of the city was with her and when the Lord saw her he had compassion on her and said unto her weep not and he came and touched the bier and they that bare him stood still and he said young man I say unto thee arise and he that was dead sat up and began to speak and he delivered him to his mother and they there came a fear uh, on all and they glorified God saying that a great prophet is risen up among us and that God hath visited his people and this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about and the disciples of John showed him all these things and John calling unto him two of his disciples sent them to Jesus saying art thou he that should come or look we for another when the men were coming come unto him they said John the Baptist has sent us unto thee saying art thou he that should come or look we for another and it came and in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits and unto many that were blind he gave sight then Jesus answered and said unto him go your way and tell John what things ye have heard seen and heard how that the blind see the lame walk the lepers are cleansed the deaf hear the dead are raised to the poor the gospel is preached and blessed is he whosoever should not be offended in me and when the messengers of John were departed he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken in the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously apparel and live delicately are in the king's courts. But what ye went out for to see? A prophet? Yeah, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my message before thy face, which should prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. For all the people that heard him and the public has justified God, being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him.